My name is Tan, and I'm from Clang. So today I'm on the bench with my radios. That would be the Radio Master TX16S, as well as the Jumper T Lite. And respectively to their right are their external modules. That would be the Team Black Sheep Crossfire Micro, as well as the Team Black Sheep Tracer Nano. So today I'm gonna walk you guys through the process of changing a TBS Crossfire Micro to a Nano, followed by changing a Tracer Nano to a Micro. And if I'm not mistaken, the internal components are the same. The only thing that you need is actually a retrofit kit, which just so happened I received today. So this came in the mail today. So let's get into it. I'm pretty excited because I've been waiting for this package for a while now. Team Black Sheep logo. Okay. What kind of mesh packaging is this? I'm guessing it's a bit more environmentally friendly compared to um, your usual bubble wrap. Oh yeah. And there it is. The retrofit kits. Hold up, I should. As you can see, if you were to buy the retrofit kit to change your micro into a nano, there are two types of nano. More specifically, if you would observe this one that's designed for the jumper T light is the smaller one as well as a slightly thicker housing you could see here. This thicker housing is designed for a different kind of radio which I'm not sure of. Probably one of the other Free Sky ones or something like that. But anyway, this is the one that I need, as well as a conversion board I see. So first things first, um, very clearly I see a bunch of 1.5 millimeter screws. Let's get these out, top screws. So that was for the antenna holder. Yep. It's in there real nice and tight. So you can see a regular SMA. Now let's get into the body here. And let's slowly remove, push out the thing. So let's keep opening up the screws and investigating in there. So now that we've opened it, first thing I noticed, where the USB-C plug-in used to be, where the button is and whatnot, right below there, there's a GST plug, which is where we're going to be applying this. So let me also remove the SMA. Just loosen it up with a plier and roll it off as how you would a normal drone SMA. Before I move from my micro casing into the nano casing, I'm just gonna plug in the GST from this side. Plug in that SMA into the jack. So once again, it all fits nicely. So as you can see, if I plug it in like so, this thing is jutting out a little bit. If I try to close, a little bit of solder work needs to be done. That is the JR connector, I believe. Yes. Right, so let me get my soldering iron and then we'll get this out of the way. Right. Now while doing this procedure, I'm pretty sure I wanna be, I want my soldering iron to spend as little time as possible on this. As you can see, this part is, uh, is basically plastics. And the best way to do that is definitely with one of these desoldering tools. It's basically a suction that I pump. And it sucks out the air when I press this button here. Now the objective of this is to introduce new solder to flow down and make sure it enters into a liquid state and then press the suction. Into the hole a little bit and then suck. Get my soldering iron there. Melt it and extract. Suck and suck to the plastic, which I can uh, definitely use this to push in and reverse the process later. 
But with that said, this is now ready to be placed into the retrofit kit. So I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna plug in the GST. And once it fits in there nice and snug, let it line with that screw hole over here. And I'm gonna use the provided screw that they gave. And once again, it is a 1.5 millimeter hex screw. It's gonna get that in place. Right. So now with the GSC connected on each side, my bad. So over here, just remember to let your SMA out. And um, from there, you can actually just let it sit on the board and start assembling this. I'm gonna put in the silver screws. I like how everything just snaps into place like I mean, besides the desoldering and soldering of the, um, this is called the JR plug, I believe. Yeah, besides that, everything else just fits. And with that, I could effectively close. And now my micro has been changed into this year nano. So once again, just securing everything. Plug in like how you normally would. And uh, yep, get the screws in. Now let's get this antenna in. Once again, rolling in like a normal SMA. And towards the very end, just tighten it. Close it like how you normally would. And secure the antenna. So now the conversion is done. Now for the test. So just gonna plug it in. And I've got power. Let's just get this LiPo connected. Well, it's looking kind of okay. You see green, and even the radio is showing green. So. Yep, uh, also looking good. And let's see if it arms. Arm motors. Disarm motors. Let's go into turtle mode. Turtle mode. Arm motors. Disarm motors. Well, it flies. <laughs> okay then. It seems that the RX actually follows the crossfire. So no need for rebinding. Conversion successful. The retrofit kit works and that's how you do it. I'm gonna do the inverse and with my Tracer Nano, I'm gonna convert it into a micro. One thing I did notice that's different is buying a micro kit comes with the SME while as for micro to nano doesn't you have to transfer the SME from the device to the other we start off by using our 1.5 millimeter hex screwdriver and get that out let's get those two screws out oh be careful so yeah uh, when you open it don't rip it apart because uh, there's a bunch of wires over here connected by a JST plug from this side to this side so I'm just gonna continue and disassemble this mm -hmm. right okay then I got this out I'm gonna start off by unplugging this JST that's right next to the type C because this also has a SMA built in, I'm just gonna unplug it from here. And now I can lay this nano to rest for a little bit while I transfer it over here. 
with the transfer, you definitely need to bring out your soldering iron. Because the part that they give over here, what this is, is the JR plug, which is what is received by the Radio Master TX16S. But before I put it on, I'm just gonna make sure and double confirm. USB C needs to come out from the hole. And the head goes on like so. Meaning that the JR plug should be facing upwards like so. Over here, one arm is helping hold the board up, while over here, the other hand is holding the JR plug. And I'm gonna slot it up. So now that they're sticking out, I definitely want to get some flux. Let's touch the tips a little bit. Now mind you, this is a very delicate process because the um, pins that I'm trying to solder over here, the bottom of it is plastic. You definitely want to take your time and not rush because you might end up heating up the bottom. Unless you have more of those one, two, three, four, five, five pin JR plugs, then do what you want. So I'm gonna heat up the pad a little bit and then apply some solder and let it sink in until it touches the pad and then I remove. As the solder will follow the trail of the flux into the hole through forming a bridge to the other side. I gotta tell you, much easier to put on this flux and then take them out. That should do. X possible. Just give it a light tug. It's not going anywhere. So let's get the rest of the kit in. Since I unplugged it out of the SMA just now, I'm just gonna find it again. Wait. Easy. So just wiggle your way and make sure the um, SMA wire is not in the way of your button. All three of the silver screws are secured. And with that, the top part should sit in place. Looking good. And we'll get the remaining screws in here. And there it is. nano into the micro so final test double antenna that's the tracer so my TX16S and it fits in like a glove lights up all looking good I have my external RF Set the crossfire and by right the this tracer should actually follow the internal components of the tracer here. Alright, so let's give it a check. Well in this case it doesn't actually automatically bind I think. Um, before that let me just head into crossfire configure. Tracer Micro TX. Let me just click bind and see what happens. Confirmation. Update Micro RX. I see what's happening here. My TX16S is the updated version. That's why I wasn't reading. So I'm just updating my receiver right here. I have a feeling if I move it back to my T light, it might not work. Let the TBS ecosystem do its thing. RSSI critical. Oh, well, what do you know? I see a green light. Minute. Another green light as well. Turtle mode. Huh? Angle mode. Acro mode. Angle mode. Horizon mode. Acro it's responding. 
And finally, the arm test. Yep. That sync. All looking good. So, if you're thinking about the retrofit kit, uh, at least in terms of TBS Tracer as well as the TBS Crossfire, these are interchangeable parts and they follow the same system. The Nano uses a JST, while the Micro uses the JR plug. So, if you're planning to buy the Jumper T Lite or a TX16S, definitely consider the retrofit kit. And my personal recommendation is you'll definitely get more value by sticking to one system or less hassle basically. I have like two quads that are tracer and like three quads that are crossfire. So it, it gets a little bit dicey in, in terms of which controller versus which drone I want to use and whatnot. So if, if it was up to me, if I could turn back the clock, if I actually had a tracer from the beginning, I would stick to only buying <coughs> a nano version of the tracer. And um, if I had the cross, I had the crossfire to begin with. If I could do it over again, I would definitely have just bought a crossfire nano instead. But the tracer was on discount, so that's what actually pushed me to try that system. And I heard, oh yeah, more penetration, whatnot. Uh, does it matter? Eventually, you'll come to figure out that convenience actually has a better value than having to having to think so much about which one to use. So if you have one system, just stick to it. I hope you found what you're looking for. My name is Dan. I am from Clang, and have a nice day.